So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a contouring operation to create a chamfer on the part using that chain that we just created. Now you remember we created two chains on my list they're 21 and 22. 21 is at the bottom of the chamfer you see there and 22 actually includes the entire chamfer. So we're going to use 22. You may have different numbers on your file but, uh, but select that chain there that we just created in the last step. We're going to go ahead and go to the solid mill traditional toolbar, choose the contouring operation, and you'll have to go here in the general tab, make sure that you're using your 3 8 inch chamfer mill. It probably had the 3 8 inch end mill selected because that's the last tool that you used. So get your 3 8 inch chamfer mill selected. Use the feeds and speeds from your chart. I'm not going to update the feeds and speeds here right now, but you should make sure that you update them from the ones in your chart. On the strategy tab, we can go with one rough pass, no finish pass. The cutting strategy should be climb. You don't need to alternate cut direction. It's only going to make one pass. Process order, go with width here. Um, spiral move, no. We don't need any stock allowance or floor allowance. And because we selected that chain that included the entire chamfer, it actually read the depth from the chain definition. Um, the incremental depth is fine because it, uh, it's the tool diameter. Starting depth is going to be zero. Um, stock automation can either be on or off here. It doesn't make that much difference. We don't need to worry about anything in the advanced tabs or at this point in the links tab. Go ahead and click OK there. Now it created a chamfering operation and because we have so many toolpaths there right now we don't see that directly but I believe it's this one right here. Um, we'll go ahead simulate that and it's going to simulate the whole operation. So we've got our part Make the contour and it has made that chamfer just like it's drawn on the part. Now let's look at the whole part though here. Because one thing that we'll notice is that for some reason we've got a chamfer here that lines up with this one on the top of our boss and that's not part of the part. So we need to actually figure out why that happened. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop. We're going to highlight, I, I believe that it was that chamfer mill, this one, that did that. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of the other operations in the, uh, in the Operations tab. Highlight all of those and go ahead and simulate it. So it should cut the entire part except for that last chamfering operation. And this is a trick that we can use when we're troubleshooting our files. So, uh, so I've made my part here. It's finished with everything. It didn't do the chamfering operation because I didn't have that highlighted when I clicked Simulate. If you go up here on the simulation toolbar, the advanced simulation toolbar, we're going to save the current simulation state. When we do that, this other icon comes up that says simulate from saved state. Now, if I highlight only the contouring operation and run that, and I can single block through that, so I can single step through. Let's see here. I want to look at maybe the, the right side. Well, that is not what our end mill looks like, is it? Um, let's go ahead and run the simulation and see what it does. And so you can see that that tool, the tool definition is probably wrong for that tool. So let's go ahead, stop this. In the, uh, and you can either go to the Tools tab or over here in the Operations tab, you can find where we've called that tool. We can double click on it and open up that tool definition. And so what I suspect is we've misdefined the shape of that chamfer mill here. And, uh, and, and sure enough, so this shows a chamfer mill with a sharp point at the bottom. And I happen to know that the chamfer mills we're using are shape 2. They've actually got a flat at the bottom. The, uh, the diameter of that flat is equals 1 divided by 32. It's 1 32nd of an inch. That's the tip diameter. If you do equals 1 over 32, it will calculate that there. And, um, and so it's got this cutting length here of 0.75. And so that was going from here 0.75 inches up. And so it was drawing that whole tool here up like that. And our cut length is actually about half of 0.375. And so if I go 
equals 0.375 divided by 2 over here. Now I've redefined that tool. I've got the angles are all correct. The tool length looks good. The shank diameter looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. And so this was a tool that came with our original tool list and it seems like it was misdefined in the original tool list and until we made this chamfering operation it didn't actually matter to us. And uh, a lot of times in that tool definition some of the features in that tool definition are only important to us for the simulation and some of them actually control how the tool works uh, with the cutting operations. But let's go ahead and simulate that contouring operation one more time. And so now we can do it slowly. You can see the tool now goes around and it does not interact with that boss on the way in and it comes on comes off the part and it makes us a good chamfer on that edge of the part.